Good evening. Welcome to St. Anne's Catholic Church as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Today we will be singing the Mass of Christ the Savior, beginning on page 917. The entrance hymn is number 713, Take Up Your Cross. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, today we, we celebrate Laetare Sunday, uh, the fourth Sunday of, of Lent. We are right smack dab in the middle of our Lenten season. Uh, this is a, a bit of a respite from uh, all of our Lenten disciplines. We don't give those up. Uh, yet uh, we begin to see the finish line uh, at, you know, right in our vision. So uh, the, the light at the end of the tunnel comes on Easter Sunday. Uh, this is a day to continue uh, to be bolstered in our, our efforts uh, to have hope uh, that the, the resurrection day of Christ is coming. And so as we prepare ourselves now to enter into these sacred mysteries, let us begin by calling to mind our sins as we ask God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gagal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover 
on the evening of the 14th of the month. On the day after the Passover, they ate of the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day, after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, He made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. 
But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off for a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. So as I mentioned, uh, today is Letare Sunday. Uh, Letare being a word meaning let us rejoice, let us be glad. Uh, Today is meant to be a bit of a pause uh, in our Lenten journey halfway through, uh, a time we typically take to step back, assess how we've been doing on our, our Lenten disciplines, uh, our Lenten sacrifices, you know, how are we doing with our prayer, our fasting, our almsgiving. And if we have slipped a little bit, uh, then now is the time to reassess and to recommit to those disciplines in these remaining weeks that we have uh, before Easter. Uh, this is a day uh, where the message given to us is meant to be a message of hope. And in fact, the rose color that I wear today is a symbol of that hope, rose being the color of hope. And yet, I, I don't want any of us uh, to get this wrong, because uh, this message of hope is not simply meant to be a feel-good message. You know, the kind of message that says, oh, well, everything is just going to work out. Because sometimes things don't. Uh, but that's not what hope is about. In fact, the hope that truly comes from God uh, is, is there to remind us that there is a reason to keep moving forward. There is a reason that we can lift our heads high today, even if it might seem a bit hard to do so. You know, the thing about hope is, is that we don't need hope if life is going fine. But it is the heart that seeks to hold on to hope, and it's the heart uh, that, that looks for a reason to hope, that recognizes something very important about life. And that is that there is a need. You know, that they are going through some suffering, some pain, some heartache, some deprivation, something that needs redemption. 
and it's the heart that hopes that is willing to hand it over to our Lord to keep moving forward, knowing that it's all in his hands. So, so that's what today is, is really all about, to acknowledge what we might have been through, maybe what we're still going through, and forging a path through it all, despite it all, always keeping our eyes on Christ. Now, you probably know a lot of people, and, and maybe you yourself uh, uh, would, would uh, struggle with this, uh, to have a hard time uh, with hope, to say, how do I do that? How do I hold on to hope? Because it's not just a matter of saying, chin up, you know, think positively. You know, our scriptures today actually tell us the reality that growing in hope is a process. You know, we heard of the first reading. It, it told us about uh, the days following when the, uh, Joshua and the Israelites entered into the promised land and what they were doing. You know, in the passage just before what we heard today, they were setting up altars to God. They were circumcising their men. They were offering prayers and sacrifices to God. And it was a culminating moment for them uh, after 40 years wandering in the desert because now after 40 years, they finally hear these beautiful words from God where he says, today I have remo- removed the reproach of, his, of Egypt from you. And this is so significant. This is what they've been waiting for, for 40 years to finally realize the hope that they had been holding on to. After 40 years, it took them that long to let go of that reproach. And you might ask, well, well why is that? And, and I think to understand that, you have to understand what the reproach of Egypt actually is. This was the disgrace you know, the rebuke that they experienced during their time in Egypt uh, that they held on to throughout those years in the desert. It came from the fact that they were slaves. They were oppressed. They were disobedient to God. And so even after they, they left Egypt, they had this woundedness in their hearts. They still held on to sin. They had that guilt. They needed to be freed of all of that. And you might think that, you know, they were free the moment that they actually got away from the Egyptians you know, when they passed through the Red Sea and the Egyptians were drowned in the waters. Uh, but, but no, that was not the moment they were free. They were physically free. But uh, in their hearts, they were still holding on to so much. And they needed time. They needed time to be purified and redeemed by God before they were ready to receive the fullness of God's blessing. And that would take for them... 40 years. But, but all through that time, God did not give up on them. They kept trudging along in the desert day after day, month after month, year after year, accepting more and more of God's grace into their hearts as he cleansed their hearts, preparing them for what we heard today. And, and this process, growing in hope, was really a matter of them witnessing each day all the little ways that God was working on them purifying them in little ways each step of the way. It was a process of being healed. It was a process of being reconciled to God. It was a process of being forgiven. And and that's the key. They needed to recognize their need for mercy. They needed to humbly come before God and ask for that mercy. And then they needed to humbly and willingly accept the mercy of God into their hearts. And that's the process. For the Israelites, that took 40 years. For us, it takes time as well to recognize, to ask, to receive. And we have to be patient with that process. We have to be patient each day, seeing the little things that that God is doing uh, as signs of his love and as reasons to hope. But when that, that ultimate day comes, as the Israelites expressed today, you, know, you can imagine the joy they must have had to finally hear what God declared, that the fulfillment of their hope was now there. They had accepted the reconciling grace that God offered. And, and what a wonderful lesson that is, and what a wonderful experience it was for them, that there is such interior freedom when we experience true forgiveness. You know, St. Paul talks about this. He describes it uh, as saying that whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Our hearts can be created anew. We can leave behind the woundedness and the sin and the gloom that comes from those. And what St. Paul says is is significant because he says that it comes from God. 
who has reconciled us in Jesus Christ. Repairing our relationship through Jesus. Forgiving us through Jesus. And then Paul goes on to say that we who have been forgiven are now ambassadors for Christ, meaning that we're called to go out and do as Christ has done for us, to offer reconciliation, to offer forgiveness to others, to help them know the hope of God and to help them become that new creation. And I think that's the other uh, very important lesson for us today, that we don't just open ourselves up to receive the forgiveness of God, but we are called to go out and offer that forgiveness to others. You know, the the story of the prodigal son is a wonderful example of this. You know, that younger son, we'd say he did an awful thing. He basically told his father that he wished he was dead. And then he took his money, moved away, squandered it all, forgot about his family. And uh, as he was uh, eventually got down to nothing, he began to think to himself how to get himself out of this rut. And he had the idea of going back home. And through all of this, there's this process of healing and hope taking place in his heart, just like with the Israelites, because he had to set out on a journey home as well. It didn't take 40 years for him. It was probably just a few days. But the whole time he was thinking to himself about what have I done and what am I going to say to my father when I see him and how am I going to say it? But then that crucial moment came when his father saw him on the horizon and he runs out to him, arms outstretched, and he embraces them. And he calls to his servants to, to grab uh, the, the robe and the ring and the sandals and put it on him and to, fatten, uh, to, to slaughter the fattened calf because we're going to have a feast. You know, very joyful moment. You can imagine the tears of joy coming down their faces. And interesting, the father never once pushes it back in his son's face what he had done to him. Even though what he had done had devastated his father's heart, he never once condemned him. And that was the love and the mercy of a father who forgives perfectly and loves even in the midst of the greatest hurt. You know, this is the love of the father, the God who forgives us our trespasses and our sins. It's unconditional, overflowing, merciful. This is the heart of the father from which true forgiveness flows. And this is the model of forgiveness that we are called to give to others as well. But how? You know, how do we do that? How can we love like the Father? How can we forgive like that? Very difficult. But it's a choice to love in a way that takes us out of ourselves and chooses to look on this other person through the eyes of God. You know, the fact of the matter is there will be people that hurt you. And there will be people who offend you and they will criticize you and they will turn their back on you and they will betray you. They will do all sorts of things to hurt you. But your job is not to hurt them back. Your job is to forgive them. Your job is to give it over to the Lord and show them grace. And I know, you know, they, they may have, have hurt you maybe in ways that have been really bad and it might feel that they're getting away with it. But listen, and, and, and I, don't, I don't say this out of any sense of moral superiority or in the sense that, that I figured it out how to do it perfectly because I haven't. And, you know, I say this out of a stance of, of love. When, when we don't forgive, when we don't give it over to the Lord, we walk in rebellion against God because we refuse to love as God has loved us. We determine to stay wandering in the desert or squandering our inheritance. We can make no progress toward the promised land, no progress toward the home of our Father. Let's not walk that path against the Father. But rather, when someone hurts us, we have to consider how can God possibly bless me if I, if I allow my heart to be hardened and no longer listen to the grace that he gives me day after day after day. We can't allow someone else's actions or words to harden our heart against God. Forgive. Forgive. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive one another. 
Because in the end, what happens as a result? It opens up the Father's heart to us. And it frees our heart. And it gives us hope. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, let us turn to our Father as we lay before him all of our needs and petitions. for Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith. May they be granted the wisdom to pass on the faith of Jesus Christ in truth and love. We pray to the Lord. For all nations and peoples, especially Ukraine, that they may be purified of all divisions, wars, and conflicts, so that they may work together to build up a society of greater peace and love. We pray to the Lord. For those who struggle to overcome their sins, that they be encouraged to approach Christ in the sacrament of reconciliation, to receive forgiveness of their sins and the strength to resist future temptations. We pray to the Lord. For those who struggle to forgive others who have hurt them, may they have the strength and courage to act mercifully by knowing of God's deep love and mercy for them. We pray to the Lord. For our parish community of St. Anne's, may we deepen in our commitment to Jesus Christ through prayer and the sacraments, and to one another through loving service. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Robert Doring, May they know the mercy of Christ and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. God, almighty Father, we turn to you in humble, confident faith that you hear and answer all of our prayers. Accept all of our petitions that we lay before you today and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, any young ones present among us who have an offering to make can come forward to place it in the basket at the foot of the altar. The offertory hymn is number 130, Gracious God. <clears throat> Sacred 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Oh. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistant Joseph, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And now, at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Bread we 
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Invitation to stop by our script table today after Mass. A volunteer is there with uh, a a drawer full of cards, gift cards to retailers and restaurants. Uh, Feel free to purchase any of those uh, for your needs. Remember, a portion of all of those donations, all those purchases, is donated back to St. Anne's Parish and or school by the the retailers. So, again, that is right after Mass in the uh, chapel area. A uh, reminder that our March is our annual food shelf campaign month. We're collecting non-perishable food items and cash donations to assist the Lesur County uh, Lesur Food Shelf in their ability to provide for those in need within our own community. Uh, this campaign runs until April 10th, uh, so we still have a few weeks. To donate, you can place food items in the tubs at, found at each of the entrances of the church uh, today. The cash donations can also be placed in the collection basket or mailed directly to the food shelf Their address can be found in the bulletin today, along with more information on this campaign. Uh, Please note that all local cash donations are matched in part by Minnesota Food Share. Uh, Continue to pray for for Ukraine uh, these days. Uh, We we are offering a a communal rosary each Friday of Lent following the Stations of the Cross. Our Stations of the Cross is is celebrated here at the church every Friday at 5.30 p.m. And then following after that, roughly around 6 o'clock, we begin that rosary. So all are invited for that. And then finally today, ask your prayers uh, for a little one uh, who today after Mass will be entering into God's family, the church, through the waters of baptism. Uh, Violet Isabella Guerra is here with her family, her loved ones and uh, uh, friends and godparents, uh, everyone. And uh, so I ask your your prayers for her as she begins this, this journey into the faith of Jesus Christ. I would pray for her family as well at this time. And so as we conclude, let us pray our prayer to the Blessed Virgin as we pray for Violet and for all the baptized. Let us say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The closing hymn is number 398, Be Thou My Vision.